hello children so today we are going to be discussing the different types of negative symptoms you know that you can witness under the schizophrenia so we are already through with the positive symptoms where we talked about uh, the delusions the formal thought disorder and we also talked about the hallucinations and its various kinds and in this we'll be talking about uh, you know the various uh, types of negative symptoms so to say you can see on the slide also they've given some of the pictures which very clearly uh, you know represents that how negative symptoms is all about the deficits you know deficits you know how decreased you know are your uh, thoughts or your emotions they are not being well expressed you know they are not in excesses but rather there is a deficiency or you would see deficits in your thought process in your emotions and even in terms of your behavior there's not much to kind of display so you can see how even in terms of communication in terms of your motivation in terms of your socializing or for that matter facial expressions all of that is all actually coming down it's it's come to a halt you know you really cannot uh, witness all of these things in a person is um, uh, in a way showing the negative symptoms of schizophrenia going ahead we have the negative symptoms which are mainly the allogia we have the blunted effect we have the flat effect and we also have the evolution you know and then we have the psychomotor symptoms which will also uh, we'll discuss and when we talk about allogia you know it is very clearly it is the poverty of speech and uh, how there is a reduction in terms of your speech and uh, even the content that probably you tend to speak or share you know so you don't speak much here so there is definitely a poverty of speech being witnessed here so definitely children uh, people who witness the negative symptoms you know so to say they are going to have poverty of speech they are going to have the blunted and flat effect they are going to be also showing uh, a loss of volition where you know they are not willing to do anything or take action for anything and there'll be a social withdrawal also then coming to your blunted effect in this people are going to be uh, so to say um, they are going to be showing emotions but all of that is going to be far less than the uh, way it was being witnessed in the positive symptoms so here people will show anger but less sadness again less joy will also be less and there'll be many other kind of feelings that somehow um, you know um they will not be able to express much or show much as compared to other people then in case of the flat effect if you see it's very clear from the word itself it's absolutely flat falling flat you know so the person is not going to show emotions at all over here and uh, that is how it is been given the name called the flat effect and when we talk about the evolution you know uh, the person uh, if you see is not uh, able to uh, you know uh, uh, you know start or complete a course of action you know there is apathy which also means there is lack of motivation there is lack of interest or there is lack of enthusiasm you know the person does not feel motivated enough the person does not feel enthusiastic or is not interested in doing it so therefore they are not able to complete the course of action they are not able to even kind of start with the course of action so that is evolution you know and the people therefore you know with these negative symptoms of course are going to absolutely withdraw themselves and uh, they're going to be uh, not socializing and uh, they'll be just focused totally on their own ideologies on their own fantasies so to say so they will not be really uh, getting out to sort of interact socialize so it's just totally grappled you know with the, with these uh, uh, negative symptoms 
So we're done with the positive, we're done with the negative, and now we have the psychomotor symptoms, you know. And uh, psychomotor symptoms, uh, it's all about um, making extremely, uh, you know, weird or odd gestures. And uh, uh, there are various, you know, extreme forms that a person can take, you know, in terms of uh, their own uh, way of uh, uh, functioning you know, even in terms of how their body begins to function. So they take extreme forms of it, you know, and that phenomena also to say that entire uh, way of uh, depicting these uh, uh, extreme forms is catatonia. And we have the various forms of catatonia. So we have the catatonic uh, stupor, we have the catatonic rigidity, and we also have the catatonic posturing. In the catatonic stupor, the person is going to remain absolutely motionless and absolutely silent for long stretches of time. So you will not sense the person moving or expressing or trying to say something or maybe trying to vent something out. Nothing. There is absolutely no motion. There is absolute silence that you will see and of course for long stretches of time. In catatonic rigidity, if you see, the person is going to uh, show some kind of postures which are going to be, uh, you know, very, very rigid, uh, extremely upright, you know, and they can stand like that for hours, absolutely still, you know. And in catatonic posturing, uh, there are postures, uh, you know, uh, very, very bizarre postures, very bizarre, very awkward positions. And they can stay in those positions for the longest time, you know. So this was all about the positive symptoms, all about the negative symptoms. And of course, the last was the psychomotor. And with this, you know, we finish with our schizophrenia. Thank you so much.